الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على محمد الرسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته واهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد حياكم الله my dear brothers and sisters to this uh, continuous session of the benefits from the seerah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and as we spoke last week we have covered a number of uh, uh, issues. We talked about uh, the Prophet ﷺ in the cave, him and Abu Bakr Sadiq. We spoke about uh, his uh, guide in, in the journey from Mecca to Medina, Abdullah bin Urayqit, who was at that time uh, an idolater, meaning on the same religion of uh, the enemies who are chasing Rasulullah ﷺ. But Rasulullah uh, hired him, or Abu Bakr hired him, and Rasulullah approved it uh, because he was a uh, very expert of the uh, uh, ways of travel to Medina. Um, and we spoke about Amir ibn Fuhaira, the uh, slave who Abu Bakr Siddiq have uh, freed him. Uh, and he, Amr ibn Fahira, accompanied uh, the Prophet and Abu Bakr in their journey to Medina. He was Muslim, though. Uh, we spoke also about uh, that uh, shepherd who um, Abu ba- the Prophet and Abu Bakr Siddiq passed by on their journey to Medina, and uh, they, Abu Bakr asked him to uh, slaughter one of the goats for them with uh, any money to give but he refused because uh, it wasn't his own sheep but he was uh, yeah he was a slave of somebody and he was working uh, as a shepherd uh, but he offered them milk of these sheep because milk can't be you know produced. Um, and also uh, we spoke about uh, the tent of Umm Ma'bad which Rasulullah uh, passed by on uh, his way to Medina and how Umm Ma'bad hosted them and they uh, 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 served them food and uh, now uh, also uh, lastly we spoke about uh, Suraqa ibn Malik ibn Juhshum who uh, chased the Prophet Sallallahu and Abu Bakr uh, hoping to catch them and return back to Quraysh with them uh, and get the prize which is 100 uh, heads of camels. Uh, and he was at that time uh, again idolater was upon the same religion of Quraysh but uh, when Rasulullah uh, subjugated uh, Allah the Almighty to protect them. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, caused the horse of uh, Suraqa to uh, stick in the sand for three times and then Suraqa uh, yani accepted Islam and he testified that uh, there is no one worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he uh, the Prophet sallam, promised him the jewelry of uh, Kisra the emperor of the Persians there we stopped <clears throat> Uh, at that uh, incident. And then Ibn Ishaq, the author of uh, the biography, said, فَلَمَّا خَرَجَ بِهِ مَا دَلِيلُهُ مَا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ إِبْنِ أُرَيْقِدْ أَوْرْ إِبْنِ أَرْقَدْ سَلَكَ بِهِ مَا أَشْفَلَ مَكَّةُ ثُمَّ مَضَى بِهِ مَا عَلَى السَّاحِلِ ثُمَّ قَدِمَ بِهِ مَا قُبَى عَلَى بَنِي عَمْرِ بْنِ عَوْفِ لِثْنَتَيْهِ عَشَرَةَ لَيْلَةَ خلت من شهر ربيع الأول 
يوم الاثنين حين اشتد الضحى وكادت الشمس تعتدل he said ابن اسحاق said and then uh, their guide عبد الله بن اريقط took them on the journey on the way of uh, journey to uh, Medina he took them uh, to the south of Mecca and from the south they bend west to the coast to the Red Sea uh, coast and from there he uh, went to Medina far from the spies and uh, Uh, and the chasers of uh, Quraysh uh, to expect. And then he uh, uh, led them until reached Quba. Quba, that little uh, town near uh, Medina, which is today uh, is only uh, Uh, one district of Medina. It's inside Medina today. Now, uh, and it was inside, yani meaning from the borders, it's inside Medina. But it was a bit far from the Masjid al-Nabawi. Yeah. So he uh, brought them to Quba, to that area. That area is called Quba. And the Masjid took the name from there, Masjid Quba. It's not the Masjid was found and Then the name came, it was, the name was there, and then the masjid was built and called Masjid Quba, meaning the masjid of that area. And those people, the tribe who were living there in that area, that time, are one of the tribes of Al-Ansar, Bani Amr ibn Auf. the uh, tribe of Amr ibn Awf. And he, uh, and they arrived there uh, on the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. At the time of Duha, just before Duhur. Now, this day, this particular uh, day and date, 12th Rabi' al-Awwal Monday. Uh, we have two uh, things in regard to these two, two, uh, the, these two uh, issues. Monday and 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. Many people today, they ignore Monday. They ignore Monday. They treat Monday like any other day. But they become so zeal to do to do specific worships on the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. Saying that it is the day in which Rasulullah was born, which is totally uh, incorrect. Because the day in which Rasulullah was born, no one knows many, many opinions in regard to the dates the date of the birth of Rasulullah However, what is uh, reported authentically and formally is the name of the day in which Rasulullah was born, not the date of the day in which Rasulullah was born. The day, uh, the date of the day in which Rasulullah was born is not known to anybody. Don't listen to anyone who says that it is known. But the day, the name of the day, yes, it is known. As yani, the Prophet uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, mentioned that, as when he, when he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, said, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked uh, about uh, the day of Monday. The day of Monday, and the fasting, why uh, why he 
uh, used to fast Mondays. And then he uh, explained why, as in the hadith of Abu Qatada, uh, in Sahih Muslim, he وسلم, was asked, Abu Qatada said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was asked about fasting Monday. Fasting Monday. And then he said, uh, fasting on Monday. Uh, so he said, that is the day on which I was born and the day on which I received the revelation. That is the reason, that is the reason why he saw Sallam, um, why he saw Sallam used to fast on Monday. Is to fast on Monday. Now, whoever wants to really be grateful uh, to Allah the Almighty that uh, He uh, blessed this Ummah with anything, then He would fast Monday as a way of thankfulness to Allah the Almighty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has survived this Ummah by uh, the birth of Muhammad. Sallam, and by sending him as, um, as the last and sealed prophet and messenger. So fast, if you want to really to be grateful, then fast Monday, as he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to fast. But to leave it and come on the 12th of uh, Rabi' al-Awwal and celebrate the Mawlid, that is uh, not, Yani like it's it's not like by Allah, nor by the Prophet Sallallahu because and that's why uh, neither him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nor any of the Sahaba uh, has uh, celebrated or done anything special on the twelfth of uh, Rabi' al Awwal. But they treated twelfth of Rabi' al Awwal normally as any other day, as any other day, because there is no any. Uh, authentic uh, hadith to say that he was born on the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. And if so, there is no any proof uh, and evidence to say that he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, gave a special uh, yani rank to the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. But he didn't. He didn't. Even Told of Rabi' al awwal in which he was, yani, uh, he arrived in Medina. He didn't give it any speciality. So uh, the day which need to be treated differently is Monday, because it is the day in which Rasulullah was born, and it is the day in which he Rasulullah received the revelation first. That is the day we need to. Yani, uh, take care of. And in other hadith, he sallallahu alayhi wa also mentioned uh, that uh, it is a, a day uh, the deeds are uh, raised to Allah on, on, uh, on that day. On that uh, day. Not only that day, but that day and uh, and uh, Thursday as well, Monday and uh, Thursday, Monday and Thursday, and 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 he saw Shalem uh, mentioned that and explained it. Uh, so he saw Shalem. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, uh, told us and informed us uh, about fasting Monday as well as also uh, Thursday, also Thursdays. Um, now, as in the hadith, as I said in the hadith, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, informed us that on Monday, uh, he, he used to fast on Monday because Monday is the day in which he was born. 
and in which he, wa- he received the revelation. But in the hadith of Abu Hurairah, which is reported by a term and authenticated by uh, an Imam al Albani, uh, again, Rasulullah mentioned something very important in regard in regard to uh, in regard to uh, fasting Monday and also Thursday and also Thursday as in the hadith as in the hadith authenticated by Albani reported by Tirmidhi on the third of Abu Rayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said تعرض الأعمال يوم الاثنين والخميس فأحب أن يعرض عملي وأنا صائم He said men's deeds are uh, presented to Allah on Mondays and Thursdays two days a week the records and the deeds of uh, people are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said and I like uh, mine to be presented when I am fasting. When I am fasting. See, that's why yani, we say those who hope to yani, uh, treat a day, especially, then it must be Monday and Thursday. Not a date, but a day. There is no date that is treated especially, except, and, and regardless the day, but it is the date, except Yawm Arafah, the day of Arafah, uh, and uh, the uh, days, the day of Al-Nahar, the day of Al-Nahar, the 10th, and the days of al the three days after the day of Al-Nahar or the day of Eid al-Hajj, Eid al-Adha. Also, uh, the uh, Mondays and Thursdays. These are the special days by uh, name or by date. And also we have, sorry, this is by date. This is by date. Uh, Arafah, uh, day of Arafah, day of uh, the following day, the day of al nahar then the three days after uh, the day of al nahar so these are five days. Then we have the day of Ashura, the tenth of Muharram. Then we have the three days of every month, the uh, Medest days, 13, 14, 15. These are dates, not name of a day. Dates, okay? And we have the six days of Shawwal. It didn't say what day, what is the name of the day, but any six days of Shawwal, regardless the names of the dates. Um, also, uh, now, the, 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 the days of Muharram, the days of Sha'ban, in which the uh, deeds are preferable, and the first uh, nine days of the Hijjah. These, these are dates, but in regard to days, days, those which have yeah, a special uh, rank in Islam and need to be treated especially is Monday and Thursday. And of course Friday because uh, and we don't fast it but we treat it nicely and differently. Okay, Monday and Thursday are specific days that we fast. Optional fasting. Now, so then Ibn Ishaq said so what is the benefit we got from this portion is that uh, the date of 12th Rabi'ah al-Awwal is not a date of his birth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if it happened that it is the date in which, sallallahu was born, 
then we don't treat it differently except if Rasulullah done that. Because this is ibadah. And ibadah has to be yani, taken from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also from the benefits we talked today is that uh, Mondays and uh, Thursdays are days which uh, in which the uh, uh, righteous deeds are offered to Allah or presented before Allah to Allah. And good that the person whose uh, records of uh, deeds are raised to Allah while he's fasting. This means that Allah Ta'ala may forgive any sins if there is any sins or shortcomings. I may uh, double the reward as many times as he Allah Ta'ala wills of the good deeds of that man who is fasting on that day. <clears throat> then Ibn Ishaq said, uh, and Abdul Rahman ibn Uwaymir, it is uh, reported from Abdul Rahman ibn uh, the son of Uwaymir. قال حدثني رجال من قوم من أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, some men from my people uh, informed me from uh, from Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said when Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, was about to uh, go to Mecca. We hear that he is going. We hear that he is going. And we felt that he is coming towards them, to them. He said, Kunna nakhruju ila salayin al-subh, ila dhairi harratina. I mean, uh, he is talking about uh, Rasulullah leaving Mecca, coming to Medina, the Hijrah. He said, we hear about that. So every day after Fajr, we pray Fajr, and we all go to uh, yani outside Medina to the place called Harra. Harra is the land covered with uh, rocks, black rocks, black stones, black rocks, uh, which are lava, lava. The volcano thrown these rocks out. Uh, and Medina has two lavas, east lava and west west lava. And it's, uh, as I said, uh, these two uh, areas are covered with lava rocks. So he, he said, uh, the Rahman ibn Uwaymer said that we used to go and uh, wait there for Rasulullah to arrive. Uh, and he said, by Allah, we did not leave our places. Uh, up until the sun was, yani, um, pushing us away from our uh, locations uh, to find some shades because of the heat. And then he said, uh, and that was in days which are, in the summer days, which are so hot in Medina, of course. Then he said, حَتَّى إِذَا كَانَ الْيَوْمُ الَّذِي قَدِمَ فِيهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, Jalasna kama kunna najlis. He said, up until the day in which Rasulullah came to Medina, arrived Medina, we sat as we usual we usually used to do every day in the in the previous days. He said, up until there is no shade, meaning the sun is right vertically over their heads. He said, we used to leave the place and go to our houses to get some shade and some rest. He said, and Rasulullah arrived when we were in our houses. At that moment, he arrived to Quba. He said, and the first man who saw him, it was a man from Yehud. First one who saw him in Medina when he arrived. 
it was a man from amongst the Yehud. And he used to see how we uh, used to wait for Rasulullah Sallam all that long, had, uh, all that hot day. He said, and how we were waiting for him to come. And then he said, and someone said in us by raising his voice, calling, Ya Bani Qayla, Ya Bani Qayla, meaning Al Ansar, and Qayla is their grandma called Qayla. That's why he said to them, All children of Qayla. Hada Jaddukum Kadja. He said, This is your grand. Father came. And yani, it means by that, grandfather, it means that the prophet, the prophet, uh, referring to Ismail, the, grand, the, the son of Ibrahim, Ismail. Ismail is the grandfather of the Arabs because Ibrahim is, a, is the father or the grandfather, as we say, of both Ahlul Kitab and the Arabs, meaning the um, all the Romans and the Arabs, because the Romans are offspring of Yaqub, and the Arabs are offspring of Ismail. So he said. Uh, we all, when we hear that, we all left our houses and went out to see Rasulullah uh, who was uh, sitting uh, under a shade of a palm tree. And Abu Bakr Sadiq was with him, who was uh, yani, uh, similar age, in the same age of Rasulullah And most of us never uh, saw Rasulullah before that day. Never uh, had a chance to see Rasulullah before that day. So the people yani, uh, came close to him as a yani, big crowd, in a big crowd. And they could not recognize who Rasulullah is. They were looking to him and Abu Bakr Sadiq. They did not know who uh, Rasulullah is. Up until the time for the whole came. And the shade has uh, gone to a side. Sorry, uh, until the, the, the sun came to the midst of this, this, the sky, but just before the whole, where there was no shades at all. Because, you know, when the sun is. Uh, right vertically over the uh, things or objects or people, then there is no shade beneath it, no shade or to the sides. So Abu Bakr Sadir uh, took uh, his clothes, his garment, he grabbed his garment and he was shading Rasulullah like that. So then you who Rasulullah is and who Abu Bakr Sadiq is then. From this portion, we benefit that the Ansar uh, used to love Rasulullah so much and they were uh, welcoming him. They were waiting for him. They were so happy that he will come and live amongst them. And this itself is a virtue for Al Ansar, and that's why Rasulullah uh, that's why Rasulullah said that "Hubb al Ansari min al Iman." Hubb al Ansari min al Iman. The love of Al Ansar is uh, from Iman, as in the Hadith reported by Imam Muslim, Imam Bukhari, uh, 
the Prophet Sallallahu said, as in the hadith narrated by Imam Muslim, he said, the sign of a hypocrite is the hatred against Al-Ansar. Al-Ansar. And the sign of a believer is the love for Al-Ansar. Al-Ansar. And in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, the sign of belief is to love Al-Ansar. And the sign of hypocrisy is to hate Al-Ansar. Why? Because uh, Al-Ansar uh, are the ones who supported Rasulullah and that is why they called Al-Ansar the supporters. So, uh, uh, then Ibn Ishaq said, so Rasulullah uh, remained in Quba in Bani Amr ibn Auf. That Monday in which he arrived, Tuesday, uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And there, on those days, he uh, established or built the masjid known by Masjid Quba since then, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about it uh, in the Quran. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said there uh, hey, Allah ta'ala said لَمَسْجِدٌ أُسِّسَ عَلَى التَّقْوَى مِنْ أَوَّلِ يَوْمٍ أَحَقُّ أَنْ تَقُومَ فِيهِ فيه رجال يحبون أن يتطهروا والله يحب المطهرين look at that Allah Ta'ala said and those uh, Allah Ta'ala said uh, Allah Ta'ala said, certainly a most founded on uh, piety from the first day is worthier that you stand in it for prayer. Therein are men who love to purify themselves and Allah loves the purified ones. That is, uh, according to some yani, ulama, uh, some scholars, they said that that is Masjid Quba. And some others said that this ayah was uh, yani sent to, uh, in regard to the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi itself. But uh, many other ulama said that it is Masjid Quba. And that's why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he, uh, whoever uh, he whoever uh, perform wudu from his house or the place where he is uh, staying in Medina when he comes to visit Medina, a hotel or anything, uh, and um, come uh, to Masjid Uba and pray two rak'at, uh, it would then be uh, as a performance of uh, Umrah, as a performance of Umrah. So the Prophet Sallallahu uh, used to come to Quba every week, sometimes walking, and sometimes riding uh, a camel. And, and uh, he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, 
as as I said, he said that he whoever uh, performs wudu in his house or in the place where he is uh, staying and uh, comes to Masjid Quba and pray two rak'at at any time except except in the times where uh, salah is not or is not allowed. But if he comes at any time, any day, and prays to rak'at, would, yani the reward of them would equal the reward of uh, performing umrah. Performing umrah. So, Rasulullah uh, then, after he uh, uh, put the foundation of the Masjid Quba. He then left the area of Quba on Friday, uh, on the Friday um, morning, and uh, and he uh, passed by a place called Bani Salim ibn Auf. So. He left Bani Amr ibn Auf, who were uh, settling in Uba area. And he went to the north towards the place where later on became the place of the Masjid of Rasulullah. But he did not know where the Masjid going to be. As he said to the Sahaba at that time, to the Ansar, when every one of them tried to yani, drive the Camel of Rasulullah to his house. He said, "Leave it. She is commanded by her law, by its Lord, to stop where Allah Taala wills or wants." So he came. He he, he passed by Bani Salim ibn Auf at the Dhuhr time, and there. Uh, he prayed in the middle or in the middle of the valley where now the masjid which is known by Masjid al Jumu'ah is that is uh, to the north east side of uh, or you can say to the north of Uba not far from Uba a couple of miles away from Uba on the way to where the Masjid of the Prophet ﷺ is today. He stopped there and he prayed Jum'ah. It was the first Jum'ah ever Rasulullah ﷺ done. First Jum'ah ever Rasulullah ﷺ done in Islam. So it was the first Jum'ah in Islam. He prayed there. That, wadi, that, that valley is called Ranuna. Ranuna, that is the name of the valley where Rasulullah prayed the first Jum'ah. And today it's a district which is full of yani, houses and markets. And But the masjid is still there and the Saudi government, Jamallah Khair, are maintaining it as well as Quba and yani, they are taking care of it. Um, so there, a man from Bani Salim ibn Auf came to Rasulullah and he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, stay with us here and we will support you and defend you and, and do whatever needed. Then the Prophet said to them, leave the camel as she is commanded by Allah. So they left it and the camel went. Up until he passed by a house, big house of uh, a tribe called Bani Bayada. He uh, again, those Bani Bayada offered to to host him and support him and defend him, but he again said to them, "Leave it, leave the camel to go," and the camel kept going. He passed by, 
another people Bani Sa'ida again same thing happened and he said the same thing to them again he continued until uh, he passed by Bani Harith ibn Khazraj and again they offered him to host him but he again said to them leave the camel as it is commanded by Allah to where to stop and continued his journey until he came by the farms and houses of his anchors from his mother's side. It's not as sorry, it's not his mother. Uh, it's it's the mother of his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib's mother is from Bani Najjar, who uh, are, who lives in that area. They are from uh, the house which is later on became an Ansar. So, because the mother of, uh, the mother of uh, Abdul Muttalib is called Salma bin Amr. Salma bin Amr. So, uh, again, Banu Najjar asked him to, uh, yani, uh, stay with them. But he again said to them, leave the Kamal. She is commanded. She is commanded. Up until it came to a place or a house of a man called or, or tribe called Bani Malik ibn Najjar. Bani Malik ibn Najjar. Then the camel came down to the ground. To the ground. So and that time where she came down on her uh, knees, that place was uh, a place uh, or, or yeah, a place where um, they, it is called Mirbad and Mirbad is uh, where, where they when they, when they pick the dates from the palm tree, they spread it on, on, uh, on that area so that the sun uh, dries it uh, so they can save it and without any having it spoiled. Um, so when, when the camel uh, came down there, he saw Salem came off the camel and uh, he uh, asked about the owners of that uh, land. And he uh, asked to buy, it was for two orphans from Bani Najjar. And he said to them, he asked them how much they uh, need for it, so he pays it. They said, it's a gift for Allah and his messenger. He said, no, you have to take the price of it. Exactly like us, you sell it to anyone else. With that agreement, he saw a sallam accepted to take it from uh, Mu'ad ibn Afra. Oh, sorry, the... Uh, 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 Mu'ad ibn Afra told Rasulullah that that land belongs to two orphans. One is called Sahl ibn Amr and the other, his brother, is called Suhail ibn Amr. So Sahl and Suhail. And there were uh, two orphans from Bani al-Najjar, from the tribe of al-Najjar. So he said, he saw Salem said, I will please them. I will, and he gave them to please them. So he commanded the Sahaba to start building the masjid, and he himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, participated in uh, building it. But here we stop, inshallah, to continue next week, next Monday, with the benefits from the seerah and uh, the benefits from. Uh, this incident, building the masjid of Rasulullah Sallam, 
here we stop asking Allah the Almighty to uh, keep us upon sincerity, upon Iman, correct Iman, upon performance of righteous deeds, upon protected, protection from anything that displeases Allah and from here from the city of Rasulullah not far away from his masjid I say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh this is your brother Muhammad al-Maliki wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi